time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this um, in probably since 95, I guess. Yeah, in 95, 2005, 10. No, 96. So you just say like a long time. Okay, like <coughs> I started, I was still in school when I started. I was still like, in school. That's yeah. what I was going to ask. Is yeah. that something that you go to school for, or is like an accident that you, like, how do you look for a job, or how do you find How a did job? you get into it? Oh, how that? did I? Well, yes. There's two stories. One, <laughs> I did, I did go to school, I was a theater major, and I went to school for, okay. for, for theater, but um, I always tell people the story about how um, uh, my brother stole my car, it's a, it's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, when I was in school, I, um, I was studying theater, but I got sick, I got mono, so I had to take a semester off and stay home, and while I was doing that, I had my car, my car got mono too, it was sick, it stayed home. Uh, and the battery would die. So my brother, we lived at home, and you know, he wanted to take my car because he didn't have one. So he took it, he left with it, car disappears. I woke up, I'm like, Jeremy, where are you? He calls me. Uh, and he had left my car at his friend George's house. <laughs> so I spent a whole 15 minutes trying to find out who knew him. And another mm -hmm. friend of mine, Rob, came, knew him. We went to go pick him up. And um, it turned out that my friend who picked me up was working at a place that was called Central Park Media at the time, and they were looking for people to audition. So I, uh, so I came in, I auditioned. I didn't hear anything for six months, and uh, then six months later they told me I got record of Lotus War, and so I did that. Mm -hmm. so, so it was kind of like a funny, weird story about how it started, but the reality is that I was in training, I was studying, and I was doing theater and stuff like that, so it was a chance to be just kind of ready and do it. But I didn't know, if you had asked me that, I had no idea that I could do this and that I would still be doing this so much, so much longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I like, uh, um, like your work, mm -hmm. like you put in for something and, oh, you can use her voice or, or how do you go about getting your... Oh, how do I, how do I go about getting get my voice out there? Your, your voice or your... Or stuff. I there's different ways to do it. Um, mostly, I'll audition for things. There's a lot of people who know me already, so they'll okay. call me in, and and then you audition for a role, and they'll give it to you. Or else, some people know you, so they'll cast you out. Uh, you work through agents, and your agent will submit you for work also. But um, I also do. I direct as well, and 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 I cast, and produce. I started doing that about about eight years ago. And uh, listen to tapes. If people mm -hmm. are interested, you you kind of have demo tapes that people mm -hmm. put together. You have your voices on it, and you know someone listens to it and they'll call you in for an audition and, and try you out. Mm -hmm. I was really lucky, like I said. I I walked into my audition without a demo, without anything like that, and they just really loved my audition and and, and brought me in. So I was thankful. So you gonna you make a good living out of it? I do, I do all right. I mean, I manage my way in New York City. I, I uh, you know, it's not too bad. Uh, you can, the um, anime itself is is a smaller part of it. Most of us will do, it. we'll do animation, you'll do um, uh, voiceovers for audiobooks, commercials, other things like that. And also a lot of, a lot of us also do stage and, and do film and stuff like that. But yeah, you, um, I also produce. I'm a producer and I direct, so mm -hmm. I kind of went into all of the facets of it. So, uh, but I do fine. I do. I do. Yeah. It's well, it's you. You can. You can. I wouldn't mm -hmm. count on just doing the voiceover stuff. Mm -hmm. so you know, you it takes you. It takes you a while to yeah. kind of set that up. But it's like anything else. There's so much. It. There's so many. There's so many facets of it. So you can. You can. You can definitely do well. Yeah. Have you produced or directed any big? or anything? I, I do the voiceover on it. So, mm -hmm. like, I, I'll, I'll, I usually will work for companies. So I've actually worked for, um, I've worked for uh, Game Off. We did their Dark Knight mobile apps, and I worked on Pokemon that I, that I directed on that as well. Okay. And um, I'm trying to think of, and yeah, and I do, but I do a lot of direction for like for for mobile games and for other mm -hmm. things like that. And and there's other stuff that I've worked on, but we always have non-disclosure agreements. So mm -hmm. when I can tell you about it, I'll tell you. <laughs> does your uh, does your background in theater help you out when, when you're searching for a, when you're out looking for a, a roles role. and 
in the theater. Like, does it give me like does it give me a leg up or anything? Oh yeah, yeah, theater theater stuff definitely. Uh, I always tell people even though you have a great voice, mm -hmm. you want to have. Um, it's important to be able to use it, like do characters and things like that. But it's especially with anime because anime is really story rich. So and actually most of the most of any of the cartoon series are you want to put together a character. It's kind of the same thing. You're just you're just putting a little bit more into your voice. But I'm very physical in the way that I do that. Um, I just worked on a film recently uh, that an animated an animated film, and that was one of the things that producer says you could always tell when someone's had sort of like a training in in theater and with dubbing. A lot of people who've done musical theaters tend to do really well too. But I mean, it's not a prerequisite. But uh, you'll you'll make richer stories, I think, or richer characters. So I think it definitely has helped a lot. Yeah. What is a project that you've worked on that that stuck with you the most, or what would you consider your favorite? One of your favorites. That's always hard to say because <laughs> it's like we always talk about it's it's like having a it's like having kids. <laughs> like which, and when you're working on it, you kind of put everything that you have into it. Um, there are, that being said, there are three projects. Two of them I started early on. The first one was was Lotus War, was the first project that I ever did. That was the first thing that I did that A was as a professional, as a as a professional actor. And also just the character, sort of the arc of the story, I'll always say went along with like a relationship and a bunch of things that were happening at that time. So it was a really cool thing. Um, Slayers, Lena will always stay with me because uh, She's just an insane character, and she's just a lot of fun. And it's and she's it, they all have an aspect, you know. They always have an aspect of who you are. Um, but she's one of the most fun, and she's kind of been around. And she she could kind of. I was very shy when I was younger, even though that seems like a strange thing when you're talking about like being on stage or doing stuff. So having the larger sort of like a larger character that you can kind of throw yourself out into, that was kind of a good thing for me. Um, and Reese, I'm trying to think. There's also this, um, recently we did, um, I did a show called Time of Eve, where I played this uh, android that's in there, and that was, I really loved the show, the show was beautiful, and, and she was kind of nice and subtle, so I really liked that a lot. Yeah. Uh, do you, do, uh, do, you, do your fans, when, when they find out that, uh, that you did the uh, four du four kids dub of uh, Tony Chopper for yes. four for four kids. Do they give you a kind of like? Eh. Oh, do they give me a hard time? No, a, my fans are great. So no, they don't like. They all have issues. They they have, they'll they'll be like this is this is one of the other things that happens mm -hmm. with dubbing. It's like anything. It's kind of like the same with theater where you'll have you know different people do different productions, and so there's always different casts of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, all the stuff, the, the issues I always tell people that they have with that dub tends to be because it was being broadcast on network, hmm. you know. So there's different rules when you're doing that. So you can't show, like, the original stuff that happened had to be edited in a way. Now it's not being shown on the same network that it was shown on, hmm. so there's different rules. Um, and that's, that's usually what people have problems with. And it's it's really and it, and I think they know it's not it's not our fault. But most people are actually really really cool about it, and it's fun, and I love, and I'm friends with a lot of the people who are in the cast now. So, yeah. you know, maybe someday I'll make a trip out over to look back here. Yeah. Is there a process that you go through to find the voice for a character that you're working on? Like, let's say you get you get uh, assigned to a new project, mm -hmm. and they tell you to voice X character. Is, what do you normally do to find out what that character sounds like for you? Okay, this isn't, I'll tell you, there's there's two answers to it. There's what I would love to be able to do every time and what you wind up doing. Um, a lot of times, people don't realize that for, for us, a lot of times, unless they tell you what the project is beforehand and you've been able to kind of research it a little bit, a lot of times you're going in cold read. So a lot of the work that you're doing, this is why we were talking about like the theater stuff, that comes in handy because you're already kind of creating characters and things. Um, but a lot of times it's it's what we call cold read. You come in, you get the script. Maybe you've gotten to sit with it for like five or you know ten minutes. If you got it the night before, that's really great. You can kind of play with it. Um, you go through the age, kind of figure out what the attitude of it is. And for me personally, I'm very like physical. So you want to see how the character looks and, and try and figure out how that's going to sit, you know, sit in the voice, and then how you're going to go with that. Um, but it, it's. 
it's different. The other, the second answer to that also is like if it's cold read and you go in, sometimes they just throw things at you. So you're in there, you'll get an idea, and then they'll say, oh, what if you did it like a little bit, you know, more, maybe it's a little more nasal, or maybe it's crazy, or maybe they're shorter, or maybe they sound bigger, you know, and you can kind of play with it. So it is, it's kind of, it's kind of the same process that you use to make names for like your your uh, your stuffed animals when you're a child. Basically, that's what I wound up doing. Is I <laughs> I just didn't grow up. But that's all. <laughs> you have any current projects in the works right now? Uh, I do. I actually have. Um, but that you're able to that talk I'm able about. to talk about. There's a couple that there's a couple of games and things that I can't talk yeah. about. But um, I just had a release. Like I said Time of Eden came out a little while ago. I just released um, a Devil DLC. If you play a game called Gangstar Four, it's a it's a it's an iPad game. Uh, I will play the Devil, which is very exciting. I also am a Dragon Hunter that's coming out as a DLC in a game called Siegefall right now. And then I'm still on Pokemon, and um, and you can hear me as my uh, as my various Poke forms, as it were. <laughs> what about any um, non anime non <coughs> animation works in the pro any projects? Um, there's nothing that I can talk about right now. Uh, there's a couple of things that I've been, there's a couple of things in like web series stuff that I'm working about, but there's still a lot of it. Okay. So. But I'll come, I'll let you know once they, trust me, I will let you know. Right. <laughs> like have you ever been on a, like a, what do you call it, like an extra? In a I, movie or something? You know, I, ha I haven't done a lot of extra work. I have a lot of friends who do. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't done that because when I was, uh, a lot of times, a lot of times there's lines, it's long lines, but I've had a lot of friends who have done it. Um, and also for the past few years, because I was I was also producing and doing the voice stuff, that kind of locked up a lot of my time. So now um, I'm, I am have my own company, Noise of O Productions, and I sort of can pick and choose and do other things, so I'm more flexible. So now I'm getting back to doing some of the other stuff. But mm. I have not done extra work, but I know many people it's great. Fun. Not really like extra, yeah. like uh, coming out in a movie, like maybe movie TV expands, extra. Like, oh, this is. Or oh, you mean like a like a like a background uh, character, like a character or like yes. a or like a. Fem I haven't been doing. I haven't been working on film recently, so mm -hmm. but we'll see. So no, to know on that, but uh, we will see later. <laughs> these are no, these are that's 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 the thing is for the past few years I've been doing mostly mostly voice work and productions. Mm -hmm. so now I've been moving back into doing all that stuff. Do you think it's harder to find work with doing just like American animation or be, uh, versus uh, anime, like doing dub work with anime? Yes, I would say that anime. If you're, it's. It, I, I don't think that I could. You could make a career. You can. Some people do, depending on where you are. There's a lot more anime that's out here in Texas, but like I said, most people do a whole bunch more. There's way more American anime, and the place to do that is. Uh, we have some in New York, we have some over there, but the place to do that a lot is in um, is in California. There's yeah, if you're not he if you're not here near Funimation or somewhere in California, there's it's kind of hard with the, the anime. Yeah, and we have like those those are sort of like there's there's centers. So yeah. yeah, so there's Texas, there's California. We have some in New York, and they have some like in the Carolinas and different things. So, yeah. hmm. so you want to be close to that, but I would say you want to you want to as an actor as a voice actor also you just want to be as broad right. as you possibly can. My Do you have any uh, final words for is aspiring people who want to become voice actors? Or, so. Oh yeah, um, I will say train, go act, make sure that you're able to do acting, uh, do acting. Practice your craft, go out and take acting lessons because that's part of, that's a large part of what it is. But also, um, you know, do as much theater, do as much other stuff as you can, but don't get, um, don't get discouraged because you don't have any experience because everybody that you've seen at some point was in the same spot. So, like, you you never know. Like, I teach, um, I, I teach, like, a master class sometimes at NYU in there on dubbing, specifically on, like, voice acting and stuff with, uh, with, another, um, with another teacher. I'd come in, I'd come in for, like, a, a, a portion of the semester. And um, everybody started somewhere. So just keep working, keep doing, submit yourself, do what you have to do, play around, and just have fun. But yeah, eventually you'll be on the other side. That's what I say. Okay, I think that's a good. Mm -hmm.